What's up, boopers? Welcome to my Terra Online Guide to Berserkers. Berserkers are a simple yet complex class. They have the smallest arsenal of all the classes in the game, but don't worry, to compensate for their tiny arsenals, they carry around big axes. So let's get started. Boop. A Berserker's basic attack is called Combo Attack. Like other classes, it gives you mana, but something you'll want to know right off the bat with Berserker is that the mana works differently than all the other classes save for Slayers. Slayers and Berserkers both have mana decay, meaning in order to use spells they must first generate mana. There are several ways to combat the mana decay that I'll go over in later, but suffice to say you'll be needing to use basic attacks as a Berserker and Slayer much more than you would other classes. With your basic attack at level 1, you'll start out with another skill called Axe Block. This is very similar to the Lancer's Standfast skill in that it will block all frontal attacks including crowd control effects and debuffs. Note that a Berserker's block will block an amount based off of the amount on your current weapon and it isn't as high as a Lancer's block. Though casting block initially will cost mana, damage from attacks will not drain mana. In fact, you can glyph Berserker block to restore mana. Block can also be used to cancel casts charging skills if you start charging a skill and notice you won't connect with your target. Knowing when to commit and when to cancel cast is important as a Berserker because of their playstyle, so get into the habit of using block to cancel charging skills when you know you are out of range or it will be dodged. Your first attack skill you'll learn at level 2 is called Cyclone. This will be one of your core damage skills as you play a Berserker. I'm going to go on a bit of a rant here so brace yourself. The Berserker playstyle is built around your ability to charge up skills, meaning you have to commit several seconds to a skill to get maximum damage out of it. Cyclone is the ideal ability of choice when fighting highly mobile targets, because committing time to charging it has less risk, given this ability's wide damage range, making it hit everything near you. This is why it's also ideal as an AoE skill over any of your other skills. That being said, it is not your hardest hitting ability and you shouldn't use it over Thunderstrike if you know you can hit your target, but I'll go over Thunderstrike in a bit. Note that with Cyclone, when you cast it, you will shift forward, so if there isn't any collision, it can make you pass by your target. Now, I mentioned already that this skill can be charged. What charging is, is when you hold down a skill, it'll charge it up and make it stronger the longer you hold down the charge, until you get into overcharge. Overcharge will drain your health significantly if you continue to charge it for 4 seconds. So when soloing without many sources of healing, it's a good idea to avoid overcharging too much unless you don't mind investing a lot of money into bandages. The longer you wait to release the charge, the more damage it'll do. In most cases, if you have a healer, you'll want to overcharge to get the most out of your ability. The next skill you'll learn is called Flatten, and like most classes, you get all of your core abilities early on. Flatten is an important skill for both PvE and PvP, but more so for PvP. This skill is one of your few skills that does decent damage without requiring any charging, but its main use is its high chance to knock down your enemies. Timing using the skill in PvP is tricky as most players can see it coming, but unless you manage to land flattens and knock them over, you'll have a hard time catching them with other skills, so it's a good idea to stagger charges if you're having trouble landing flattens. I'll cover staggering at the end of the video though. Next up you'll learn Thunderstrike! Thunder freaking strike! This skill right here is the hardest hitting ability in all of Terra, and will be the skill you use in almost every non-PvP situation. Unlike other classes, Berserkers don't really have a rotation. On BAMs and in PvE, you will be using Thunderstrike after Thunderstrike after Thunderstrike. It's a good idea to glyph the shit out of this ability and milk it for all it's worth so that you can move at full speed while you're charging it and have a double crit rate, etc. When soloing, you can use this skill in succession while kiting around whatever it is you're trying to kill. In most cases, it will only take 1-4 to four Thunderstrikes to kill your target. Hearing this, you may think that Berserkers sound incredibly boring and easy to play, but this couldn't be further from the truth. Firstly, nothing is more satisfying than charging up your axe and then slapping the shit out of a band for 10% of its health. Secondly, I would argue that while Warriors are easily the hardest class to play when it comes to their role as tanks, Berserkers are the hardest class to play as DPS, because every time you do damage, you commit a few seconds to your attack. If it misses, you lose a lot of DPS. I'll go into detail about this at the end with staggering once I've covered the other skills though. Next is Triumphant Shout. This is the first skill you get that will help you combat mana decay of your class. Use this in between pulls in order to prevent yourself from losing any hard-earned mana that you got from using basic attacks. 
Note that while in combat, your mana will not decay, and while this buff is up, your mana will not decay. If you sit out of combat, however, your mana will gradually decay. It has a 30 second cooldown and lasts 20 seconds. Additionally, it gives you 100 mana when you cast it, so make it a habit to cast this on cooldown. Now it's time for Vampiric Blow. This skill's main purpose is utility. It is a charge skill that cannot be overcharged because overcharging this skill would be very counterproductive as the purpose of this ability is to restore health. It has a 15 second cooldown and is great for soloing or great for getting health back in PvP when your healer isn't available. Note that this skill will heal for more if you hit multiple targets, though I believe there is a target cap of how many targets it can hit to get healed from. I was unable to test this enough myself to get an exact number though. Tenacity is the second skill you'll have to combat your mana decay. Like Triumphant Shell, you'll want to use this on cooldown to keep pumping up your mana so that you don't have to use basic attacks and can keep on spamming thunderstrikes and cyclones. This spell has quite a few unique interesting glyphs to go with it including ones that make it restore hit points, restore mana over time, give you stun resist, and reduces cooldown time. You may want to consider grabbing some of these glyphs when they become available to you. Fiery Rage is your first DPS cooldown, but using it comes with a price. It makes you more vulnerable to attacks, so be careful when you choose to use this. It lasts 25 seconds and has a 30 second cooldown, so you can almost spam this skill and keep your strength up to keep your attacks hitting that much harder at a small mana cost. But try not to get caught with this up or you're going to be focused in PvP. Next is Leap Strike. This skill has two functions. Its primary function is to jump on a fallen enemy to do massive damage. Using this skill on an enemy that isn't knocked over will do very insignificant damage, so don't bother using it unless they're on their backs. It's a good idea to combo this with successful flattens to pump out a bit of burst without having to use any charge skills. Its second function is its slight mobility. You can use this as a quick burst to get out of a hot spot in PvE and PvP, but note that this ultimately makes you move slower than you actually would have if you just ran, for a longer distance. It's a quick escape, but a slow run skill, good only for getting out of the way of attacks and emergencies. Boop. After Leap Strike comes Mocking Shout. This spell is essentially an interrupt. Use this to interrupt bans and situations where your tank needs help interrupting, or use it to interrupt other players in PvP while they are healing or charging up dangerous skills. Two key uses of this spell would be to interrupt heals or interrupt flying bans and knock them back down to the ground. Next up is Unchained Anger, your third and final skill you get to combat mana decay. This skill has a much shorter cooldown than the other two and gives more mana, but it also drains health. Once you learn Unchained Anger, you can go entire BAM fights without using basic attacks, provided you have a healer that likes you. In most cases, you can just spam this and your healer won't even realize what you're doing. They'll just think you're bad and keep getting hit by the BAM. If you don't have a healer though, it's better to avoid using this skill and just get mana through combo attack. Dash is your main mobility skill as a Berserker. It has a fairly short cooldown and its effects are more noticeable in combat than out of combat. Mobility will be a constant issue for you as a Berserker, so you absolutely must not neglect this skill. It can be glyphed to have a shorter cooldown and I recommend getting this glyph for PvP, but in PvE using this ability isn't as important. Next up is Lethal Strike. Unlike your other attacks, this attack drains health instead of mana when you use it. It also doesn't hit as hard as Thunder Strike, so if you have mana you should avoid using this skill for damage. This skill is good however for its gap closing component. Using it will lunge you forward quickly, so if you have a target that is slightly out of your reach, tap this skill fast to get in their face and put pressure on them, but avoid charging it up so that it doesn't eat too much of your health. The next skill you'll get is called Staggering Strikes, a utility skill with a ton of applications. This skill will hit all targets in front of you in a wide arc and stun them for a very, very short time, but also turn their backs to face you. The primary use of this skill is as an interrupt. In PvP, it can interrupt the damage dealer and throw them off a bit by flipping them around from their target, or interrupt the healer and throw them off too. Don't underestimate how annoying it is to be flipped around by this skill. In PvE, it can be used as an interrupt to a BAM using a dangerous skill, and while soloing, this stun gives you just enough time to land a flatten without getting hit, given how this skill casts much faster than flattened. Now we move on to Fearsome Shout, Ooh, a close range shout that will fear anything near you for up to 3 seconds. This skill doesn't always run its full duration though, its primary functions are in PvP. 
as the skill isn't capped to just one target and can fear multiple players near you, spreading them out and interrupting them, temporarily leaving them very vulnerable. In group PvE situations though, I recommend not using this skill unless it's an emergency, as this will cause BAMs to run off in random directions and piss off your Lancer, possibly getting a teammate killed. After fearsome shout comes a skill called Bloodlust, a skill I like to call Kill Time. In PvE, this skill gives a slight damage boost at the cost of quite a bit of mana, but it also boosts your knockdown chance and resists significantly. The big part of the skill is the 15% damage increase to players. What this means is if you have this skill in combination with Fiery Rage, overcharge a Thunderstrike and crit anything, it will in most cases die in one hit. This turns Berserkers into a powerhouse one hit wonder class. The problem with this is that most enemies will be aware of how dangerous you are and focus on avoiding your very predictable attacks, which is why Berserkers excel when paired with another melee that is capable of holding an opponent still. Alone, a Berserker will struggle in PvP. A Berserker? Are you fucking kidding me? A Berserker will struggle in PvP, but they excel greatly in group fights because of their tankiness and ability to one-shot other players under ideal circumstances. Note that the skill has a long cooldown, so it's time. No, fuck off. Time its uses properly. <laughs> the second last skill I'll go over in this guide is called Flurry of Blows. This is an attack speed increase skill that essentially increases the animation speed of all your attacks. It's important to note that the attack speed and charge speed are different, so this will not affect how fast you charge Thunder Strike or Cyclone or your other charge skills. It will, however, affect how fast you carry through with the swing as well as your other instant spells like Staggering Blow, Flatten, or your auto attacks. The last skill I'll cover in this guide is a skill called Inescapable Doom. This skill is exactly like it sounds. It's a wide AoE super slow around the player that prevents other nearby players from using any evasive spells, meaning once they are hit by this, they ain't going anywhere. This is the skill you will use in PvP to set yourself up for a kill. It has a next to no uses in PvE though, but with this you can guarantee a hit on your hardest hitting skills. Be careful when using this though as it has a very long cooldown. There is a level 60 skill that Zerkers get that gives them mobility and the ability to retaliate and dodge attacks, but I won't be going over it in this guide. Instead, I'll cover all the level 60 skills in a video later on, including skills of classes I made the guides for before the cap was raised to 60. So now that we've gone over all of the Berserker skills, there are a few things about the class that need to be addressed. The first and most important are the rumors being said about Berserkers that they are the weakest damage dealing class in Terra. This rumor is both true and false, and I'll explain why. As I've already mentioned, Berserker's damage relies on committing several seconds to charging Thunderstrike. Their damage is essentially putting all their eggs in one basket. This means that if you miss or get knocked over or flinched while you are charging, you completely lose 6 seconds worth of damage, whereas if the same thing happens to other classes and they miss, they can just carry on with the rotation with the next few attacks without having to charge a new one. Though prior to 60 patch, Berserkers sat on top, they've fallen behind because of the high mobility of the level 60 dungeon bosses. The reason why the statement that they are bad is also false is because a Berserker that can manage to land all of his hits can still keep up with, if not outperform, the other classes. This is why Berserkers are one of the hardest damage dealing classes to play. Missing a single Thunderstrike can spell a wipe for your group come level 60 dungeon hard modes. So you must master your ability to land attacks without getting flinched by the boss. Familiarize yourself with the range at which you can start charging Thunderstrike and still get in range of the BAM by the time you are done overcharging it. Another way to combat this hit or miss DPS playstyle is to stagger charge. Stagger charging is particularly good in PvP as it makes your attacks less predictable, but they'll also do less damage. Stagger charging essentially means you randomly stop charging your skills before it's fully charged to unleash its damage. If you want to DPS without fully charging, I recommend at least charging both Thunderstrike and Cyclone to the point before you start overcharging before you release them. Against particularly hard to hit bams, I recommend abandoning Thunderstrike spam rotation completely to use Cyclone on cooldown instead, as it is easier to hit with. You'll do less damage than you would if you were spamming Thunderstrike, but you aren't doing any damage at all if you can't land your Thunderstrikes in the first place. 
That's all for my Berserker Guide. The Slayer Guide is coming soon. I hope you guys found this guide useful. If you have any questions, just leave a comment and I'll reply as soon as possible. Remember that this guide is just an overview. Don't take my word to death. Don't forget to like and subscribe to see more guide videos in the future. See ya later. Boop.